During this section, we will use an example to go through the spring hanger selection in AutoPipe workbook. We'll look at releasing anchors for spring selection, selecting the spring bender and running the hanger selection, and then reviewing the hanger selection procedures. So from within AutoPipe, I'll navigate to where the spring data set is saved. And I'll open up my spring underscore IMP model. Just reviewing this model, if I zoom in around the spring hanger and open the dialog box for the spring, I can see that the undesigned option is checked on for this spring. And the load variation ratio is set to 25%. I won't change anything. I'm just going to click OK in the support dialog box. And I'm going to release the anchors at nodes B25 and A20 for the spring hanger selection. So I can do that by double clicking on the anchor at B25. And in the dialog box, I can select to release the Y direction of this anchor for hanger selection. And what this means is that when AutoPipe runs the hanger selection, this anchor will not be supporting the pipe in the vertical direction. This is a way to make sure we don't overload our nozzle connections, which we may do by increasing the load on our spring, but we'd rather do that than to overload the nozzles. So I can accept this and click OK. Remember that the anchor will still act as a full six-way anchor when we actually run the static and or dynamic analysis. And I'm going to do the same thing down at A20. I'll double click to open the dialog and release the Y direction for hanger selection and click OK. I now want to set up my hanger selection procedure. So I'll come to my analysis ribbon tab and select hanger selection. I'll leave the rigid hanger criterion set to 0.1 inches. I only have one spring, so I already have the load variation ratio set to 25% in the dialog box for that spring, and I'll leave that as is. Um, I'll use the first selection in this list as a spring hanger manufacturer, which is Anvil, and I'm going to design for the T1 uh, operating case. We'll take a look at the, the operating cases in just a moment. I'm going to include the pipe content weight, and I'm also going to check on to show the hanger report so I can see which spring is selected, and I can click OK. It runs through, and the spring hanger report will open. It lists five springs that meet the selection criteria, and it adds an asterisk next to the sp top spring in the list because this is the spring that will be used and assigned to the support if nothing changes in my model. Generally, this is the most economical spring, and that's why it's selected. But if you needed to force the program to use a different spring, this list will be helpful in deciding which spring type you need to use. In AutoPipe, just to review, if I come to my show ribbon, I can review my operating temperature because I'm going to design my springs for temperature cases. So I see that my T1 is 500 degrees throughout the model. My T2 is also 500 degrees Fahrenheit throughout the model. And my T3 has the higher value of 500 degrees, which includes the spring point and 122 degrees um, and a section of the piping. So since the maximum value at that spring point is the same throughout all temperature cases, that's the reason that we just included the one temperature case, because it would have been repetitive. Uh, if we needed to check multiple temperature cases, we would have wanted to, che to check those options on. If I clear my color plot, I can then open the spring dialog box up again and I now see that the information from the top line of the spring report is automatically inputted into this dialog box. But as long as I continue to have this checked on and to include my spring hanger selection in my analysis, these values may change. If my geometry changes or if my loading changes, these values might change. If I wanted to stick these values, to, to keep these values in this dialog box and to definitely use these values, 
I could just uncheck the undesigned option and you can see those inputs now that are open for input, but the values are already in there. That would be how we can permanently use these values. If selecting a spring from a spring hanger manufacturer table is new to you, I recommend taking the time to go through pages 10 through 13 in the workbook to understand the process that Autopipe is going through when we run this spring hanger selection analysis. We can also run a cold load design. So again, if I open up the spring dialog for support A10N, I can check on undesigned again and I can check on cold load design. I still have my report open from the hot load design, so we'll compare them in just a moment. And I'll say OK in this dialog box. And again, I'll come up to the analysis ribbon and select hanger selection. And I'm not changing anything in here. And I'll just click OK to rerun the hanger selection. Again, a report automatically opens up with the springs that will work for this analysis and uh, it stars the top spring as the spring that will be used if nothing gets changed. Now if I compare these reports side by side with the hot load design on the left and the cold load design on the right, I see a note on the right that lets me know that I ran a cold load design for this analysis. I also see that what was calculated in step one discussed earlier in the PowerPoint was calculated as the hot load and now it's calculated as the cold load. With the equations being based off of this, it changes all of the values of the hot load and the spring rates and what spring sizes might work for the model. Notice that the free thermal movement that's calculated remains the same. Generally with springs, we want the load to be balanced in the hot operating state. But with this design, we're saying that the load will be balanced uh, in the installed ambient state. And so it can change the values a bit, bringing down both the hot and the cold loads. So we have this as an option for spring hanger selection in Autopipe. This concludes the class for spring hanger selection in Autopipe. Thank you for joining. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.